welcome back to another video. Thanks for tuning in. Just a quick video today, a quick look at the GZS3 here, along with the GZS5 and the clone, Ferguson clone 3B44. These are all primarily the same camera uh, and they're all faulty. The Ferguson clone is actually a JVC GZS3, so they are identical. Although inside they have labels in with their relevant model numbers. The Ferguson clone was actually working for me. I've never seen the JVCs here work. Uh, the Ferguson was working perfectly until uh, one day I uh, started putting colour banding on the picture and then going black and white. And then when I turned it back on a few hours later, it didn't work at all in that there was no picture in the viewfinder. Um, the GZ5 is basically the same as the GZ3, but it has autofocus and a stereo microphone. So in this video, we're going to take you through the GZ3 teardown, have a look inside and uh, see if we can find out what's wrong with it. And then hopefully if we get that one working, we'll be able to repeat the same thing on the other two cameras. Unfortunately, I don't have any service manuals for these cameras. So today I'm just going to be looking for any physical damage inside. For example, leaking capacitors or any other damage components. This is a very simple camera to take apart. Just two screws on the bottom and there's three screws on the top. Uh, two of them are hidden under that hot shoe there. Once you've removed the screw on the top of the hot shoe, you can then slide the hot shoe cover back to reveal the other two screws. And there you go, then you're in. And uh, I've got a date code there of 1983. No screws on this camera to release the PCB, just three plastic pegs on each side. I suppose it keeps costs down and obviously weight. For the next two minutes I'm just going to have a look around the PCBs. This backboard here looks like the power board for the flyback transformer. Um, just unplugged at the bottom and then there was a small cable of uh, red and brown cable on. I end up actually snapping as I pull it away. Um, the white plug is really gripping on this one. So later on I have to solder that back in place, which is actually quite fiddly. Once I popped the cap off the back of the pickup tube, I then noticed that there was a filter capacitor soldered onto the metallic housing of the picture tube. I'm just looking at the capacitor to try and see if there are any leaking ones um, but sometimes you can't actually tell until you start taking them out and having a look underneath. Uh, later on down the line I do actually remove all the capacitors from this board and test them 
and it actually turns out that they're all okay. So I just put them back in. That small PCB there is basically for the microphone, I believe, and the electronic viewfinder connecting point. Very large piece of shielding there. There is a large component there underneath that white ribbon, which I suspect is one of those custom uh, layouts again, like we saw on the portable VCR. I'm not a big fan of these captain type tape connectors, but I can see how this is over purpose because it makes the unit very serviceable by flopping down like that. But at the same time, it is a point of weakness. Um, I know on the Sony SL F1 portable Betamax, it can be a problem. If you're not careful, they can tear quite easily. Underneath this can, there are three capacitors. One is a bipolar cap, the other two are standard. And that blue one there is actually leaking, that large blue one. Uh, but in order to get it out, there was also a can on the underside of this board that I need to uh, remove to be able to get to the legs of the capacitor. Once I got it out and tested it, I found out it wasn't actually that far out of spec. But with it leaking, I'm going to change it anyway. Upon closer inspection, I noticed another cap was leaking as well. Um, it was quite wet actually under this one. Um, I'm wondering actually if some of these capacitors actually started getting worse as I applied power. Uh, they've probably been dormant for years, probably 20 years or more. I sold some legs onto the capacitor so I could test it, and sure enough, it wasn't again that far out of spec. Say so 470 UF, but it's coming up at 517. But again, as it's leaking, I'm still going to swap it out. I thought I'd give it a quick test to see how we're going on and all I've gained at this point is the white balance indicator. The banding on that CRT screen there is just the shutter speed of the camera I'm recording with. So I went on to replace a lot of other capacitors. It turns out all the black ones were the faulty ones. Um, a lot of 10 UF capacitors weren't even registering at all. It just came up as faulty in my tester. Uh, I've marked all the ones I've replaced with a red pen so I remember where I was. I tested those two top blue ones there on all three cameras. Um, they all seem to be okay, so I just popped them back in again. I swapped out a lot of capacitors in all three cameras, and I'm sad to say I still haven't got any further. Uh, without a service manual, it's hard to know where to look next, because I don't know what voltage should be in certain places. So this will have to be part one of a two-part video. Hopefully in the future I will get a service manual, and then we can look at these three cameras further. If anybody else has had any experience with these cameras and knows of any problems they may have, please let me know in the comments. All three tubes in these cameras are lighting up fine, orange, as they should be, and not too bright, and no purpling, which usually means they've uh, gone. One thing I did notice when I was working on these is they all have their own designated model number on the inside with a sticker. The JVC GZS3 is the only one looking promising of showing any signs of life. When you do the initial power up, the tube does actually power up for a moment. It tries to come through and then it fades to black. And I've also gained the white balance indicator. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching that with me. It's been very interesting taking all these cameras apart and working on them. Unfortunately, we didn't get any of them working on this occasion, but perhaps in a future video with help from other people, we will. Well, I guess that's just easy to say until the next video. Thanks for watching. And I'll be seeing you. And if you did enjoy watching this video, you may want to take a look at some of my other videos on similar themes. I'm always buying something on eBay, some old piece of technology and trying to repair it. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching.